Hi, it's Moira MacDonald. Um, the other day I made this and I liked doing it. Um, it's a kind of mixed media piece if you like and it's currently displayed on a wee easel. So bear with me, I'm going to turn the camera uh, so that you can hopefully get it all in. Um, I decided it would probably be quite interesting for you if you saw the process. Um, so obviously, having made it, I can hardly show you that. So I thought what I would do is film another one, which will be a little bit different, but pretty much the same idea. Um, gathered one or two wee bits and bobs round about me um, to work with. The intention being that I will use, or not, all of it. Um, so you can have a look. I'm going to have to shoot this in little sections uh, in order to allow things to dry in between uh, parts of it. Um, but you can have a look and see what you think and see if it's something you're interested in tackling yourself. Um, the, the gist of it all is assuming that the second one turns out okay, i.e. the one I'm going to be filming and making, um, I'll be doing a giveaway with them, both that and this, um, on this YouTube channel uh, following this video. So let's uh, get started I suppose. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a bit of background embossing. Um, and I mean heat embossing, so it's a case of uh, using an ink. Actually, wait a minute, I'm just thinking. I do have a white ink because I'm going to emboss in a kind of, I think it's called, I don't know, I'll tell you exactly what it's called. It's Eyes Ink Relief Opaline. Uh, I don't think I've used this before. It's clearly French because French is the first language. So we'll see how this pans out. Um, but I think it's kind of whitish and that's certainly what I'm looking for because this is going to be kind of shabby chicish. Um, this is a new stamp that's a Prima stamp and I think it was called Bubbles and it's really just to provide me with some background texture. Goodness gracious. That's a tight... Oh, for goodness sake, I should maybe have released that before I tried to use it. Right, so... Um, Delicata uh, White Rewards. White Shimmer, it's called. And see what kind of pattern we get here. And I can't see it at all. It is there though, so what I don't want to do is use that again. I'm going to um, take off the, what do you call it? because I want to, it's leaving quite a, an obvious rectangular shape, which is fine if it was what I was looking for, but it's not. I'm trying to make this look a bit in a shabby -shy case. So, you know, I don't want it to be screamingly obvious that it's a stamp. So let's see how that goes. I'll need to get a baby wipe. Gosh, I wouldn't have me to get a baby wipe. Where's my powder? And I've got a bit of paper below me to catch the excess when I do this. It's fine. 
Don't need to count this back into the container. I'm going to do, I've got a text stamp I was going to use as well, uh, just for background. And I've got one in particular that it's not actual letters. I, I don't know how best to describe this. It's um, it's my wee favourite stamps. It's well kind of gobbledygook to be fair. And I'm planning, I'm not going to use the white again, I'm just going to use a clear. Because that's a bit too messy. And I've not got over a thingy. So I'll use Versamark to do this. And I'm actually going to stamp on something that's going to form background as well. Uh, I've got a couple of die cut um, flourishes here. And I'm going to do some words on them and as well as put some on this wait a minute I'm going to add this here and then do this to my bolt for this might be a wee bit easier Again, this is really only to provide a kind of shabby chic background. So I'm not looking for anything incredible stamping wise here. I just want uh, there to be a, hip, a suspicion of something. And I'll be colouring these using either Distress Ink or Gelatos, I'm not sure yet. Um, I think, see when I'm making stuff, I mean I honestly, I, I do everything on the hoof as I'm going along. I don't have a great deal of uh, preconceptions of what I'm going to make and how I'm going to make it. Um, I tend to just do what I feel as I'm, as I'm working through things. Uh, it doesn't make it very easy for filming I have to say because obviously when I'm doing it it's... Uh, oh, wait a minute, It, um, it doesn't make it very easy for filming because it's, I find it quite restrictive to be honest because it means I've got to do things in a certain order and I've got to pre-plan what kind of colours I'm using and stuff like that. And sometimes I just like to go and flow as they say. These are actually from a really, a really massive die. Well, I say massive, it's not that big. It's big for me. Um, it's, again, it's an internet purchase and the problem with internet purchases, as we all know, is when you don't see something, you don't know what kind of size it is and no amount of uh, giving you inches in a measurement you the perspective you need when you're trying to um, decide if it's what you want to buy. So I bought it um, only when it showed up to think that's never going to fit through my big shot. It does fit through the big shot um, but it's it's a lot bigger than I'm, I feel comfortable with. Now, uh, I'm going to get these out because this will blow about. Now you'll need to excuse the noise. I don't think it's my um, heat gun's not too bad.
when you see the burning, you know it's time to stop. Uh, right. That's us, I think. Uh, not quite what I'd expected. I'd expected a white, oh, it's upside, upside down, a white um, colour, but it's it's come out kind of transparent. But that's okay because it's it still shows texture and that was my main concern and what I'd really been looking for here. So, uh, that's that first aspect done. So, we'll tidy this up a wee bit and then we'll see what's next. So, the next bit is uh, have some flowers that I fussy cut. Now the actual scrapbook paper itself, if I turn it over so you can see the other side, that's where I got my roses from. Cut out a couple of roses from this and I'm planning on sticking these on the back. I've gone round them with tattered rose uh, distress ink but what I want to do is I want to give them just a little bit of elevation and rather than using 10 million um, foam pads I am just going to use some corrugated card. Uh, it's quite often I've noticed an awful lot of mixed media artists do this for giving their projects elevation and the difference between this project and um, say making a card is this is obviously something that's going to be displayed and um, it's not going to be uh, lifted up and touched so in that respect I'm not overly concerned about uh, you know the, the bit itself being mega stuck down or whatever or mega attractive um, it should hopefully never be seen because it will be displayed in such a way that that's not going to be obvious. Now I've just cut some wee bits of car uh, corrugated card uh, to try and this is um, what's it called gel medium uh, matte gel medium that I'm using to to stick this and there'll be a coat of this will go on the actual thing there as well the back of this to hold it down. So I just cut, I mean, just randomly, not cutting, I mean, obviously cut so that they're not going to be noticeable, but in the main, oh, here comes my brother. I'm filming. I'm filming. to make sure I've got little edges supported so that they're not going to uh, pose a problem. is going to be visible. So I'm going to take that off and cut that wee tiny corner off. And stick that back down. That should be fine. Take a wee corner off this and that can go in that wee bit. I think that will support enough. Uh, I mean, there are going to be wee, there is a wee sharp bit down there that's going to stick out. It might be worthwhile actually just taking that off. Mm. 
might actually roll that way back because that's a bit. Roses don't really have sharp edges, do they? Right, that'll do us. And we need to now stick this onto the card. It is going to overlap a little bit on this side, but the rest is fine. So we'll get our gel medium again. This is almost done, this pot of gel medium, and I feel really proud that I've actually used something to the end. Uh, I mean, we do, we glue, you know, you, you go through a lot anyway, so it was inevitable. At one point I bought matte medium, um, but it's just, it's too runny for what I want to do with it more often than not, so it's not really something I've, I've used. Just make sure I put enough of that on it. Now I've got to try and pick it up and stick it. Now it's actually got a straight edge because it was cut from the edge of the paper, so I want to get that against the edge of my thingy, that's us. And what I'm going to do is set a bottle on it to hold it down. Uh, what else have I got that's heavy? My phone I think. Set my phone there. And that'll hold that down and we'll leave that to dry. And I'll wash this brush. No I won't. Or will I? No I won't because Lift that off for now. Well, give it a minute. What I actually want to do is I want to add a couple of wee bits of lace here. Um, I had actually, I cut, I had a big section of lace and I cut um, it right up the middle. And what I'm planning on doing is just kind of using sections of it on this. Um, to give it a kind of shabby chic quality. The, the one of the things that kind of bugs me with lace when you use it is it can see when you've got a, a straight edge. Uh, there's something about it that just doesn't look right to the eye. I don't think. Um, so I try whenever possible to kind of make it look a bit squintish. And what I'm going to do when I, I'm going to tuck it in under the flower, which is one of the reasons I'd wanted the flower elevated, and I'm going to make it kind of wrinkled um, because I think it will just sit nicer. It will look more attractive. So we're applying a wee bit of glue in here for this to stick down. And then we're going to try and stick it in. And I should have a wee pair of tweezers that I can use for this. I don't want to use my good tweezers. These are my always stuck with glue tweezers. And we'll just stick that in there. And it should stick to that without too much difficulty. We'll just put another wee bit there. I don't, I don't mind if it's a little up. That's fine because the whole thing about it is the kind of shabby chic thing. Um, and I'm just going to use wee tiny snippets of lace to apply in this just make it stuck down. Stick it there.
to apply another wee bit of glue under that because I don't think there's enough glue there. My medium dry is clear by the way so I'm not really uh, worried about this showing. Plus I think by the time I'm done there's going to be so much added to it that uh, you're not going to be conscious of little tiny bits like that. gently poke it in so that it's uh, not there is at least one edge under the picture it just looks as if it's poking out a wee bit Sorry for the dark one. I don't think Tim Holtz took that into account when he was uh, designing his craft mat that the scissors rattle off it every time you do something. Right, that'll do us in the lace front for the time being and now I'll put the lid back on this and uh, I'll allow that to dry and I'll wash my brush. So, um, a day has passed since the last little bit of video, sorry about that, uh, I was meant to be going to see um, the Lego movie and uh, the schools are on holiday here so I set off and when we reached the car park or the cinema which is shared with some shops it was uh, positively jumping, not to put too fine a point in it. Um, and there was just no way we were going to get parked so we came back home um, but of course when you come back home there's always something else that needs to be done so once you've handled that before you know it you're looking at the time and you're thinking eh, there's not much point in doing much today so achieved very little I'm afraid right so let's see where we're up to I've got all the stuff together here that I'm planning on using in this. So we've got our tag, we did our embossing, we've got our um, cut out roses and wee bits of lace and the next thing I'm going to do is, and I should have probably did it yesterday before I did anything else, is um, shabby shake up the actual card itself. Now I know you can get a wee fancy Tim Holtz tool to do this, I don't have it, so I just run along the side with a pair of scissors and touch wood. It seems to work okay. Probably not as incredibly distressed as a distressed tool would make it, but I'm not really that fussed. It's good enough for me. I'm going to leave the bit with the flower. That'll do us. It is quite dusty, so I shall vacuum when I'm done. Or if you want, we can stop and I'll vacuum just now. But personally, I'd sooner leave it. Right. Uh, distress tool and... Well, it would really have been a big, big help if 
the paint had been at the top and it's not. There we go. Now, uh, Victorian velvet is what I'm using for this. Ground the car. And that will be that taken care of. This is actually I, I used a uh, fire brick with this tool. <laughs> so it's probably uh, quite a bit darker than Victorian velvet. Fine because it still matches in. Okay, right, that's fine, that's us. Now, what I do want to do is uh, I was going to go over, use this just now, a wee bit of acetate. Um, you remember that we embossed these yesterday, uh, so I was just going to go over them with a bit of distress ink and Hopefully it will show up the bits that were embossed. You need to be really careful doing this because um, it's fairly thin, the actual die cut. So, you know, it will bend. No bother at all as I go over it. But it should effectively show a degree of emb uh, emboss resist, and it does. Uh, hopefully you'll see that. I don't know if the camera is going to be good enough to pick it up, but if not, what I'll do is I'll take some close-up photographs when we're done to put on the whoops, the end of the video. Yeah, I've damaged that bit. And I'm not happy with it, so I'm going to cut it off. Scissors. I don't like, I've managed to bend that up there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that there at a wee angle. I'm taking off this bit here because that's only part of the die cut and that will do me there. Now, um, get me the right. down a bit because uh, it's all pinkish and it will I mean don't get me wrong that's quite handy because that's the colour we're working with but it's not what I'm wanting just now. Right so that's that. Now what I also wanted to do is I have die cut well never die cut but I got these as a couple of the white flowers, I have stuck a couple together and I've folded them or bent them in such a way that they're cup shaped. So I'm going to put a little uh, flower bud into the centre of both. Um, I was going to use my distress tool to distress them, but I don't think I'll bother. Here's my fabric hack. What I'll do is I'll get them stuck in first and then I might use gelatos to um, add a wee bit of colour to the actual flower. Add that in the 
center. Add strand of glue. Okay. Oh, help. That's a problem with fabric protect, particularly when you're getting near the end of it. You get all sorts of bother with it. Right. We'll leave them to hopefully dry and harden off. Right, I was going to paint this uh, using gelatos. Um, let me get my brush. Try using this. So I'll bring back my acetate again. And... Um, This gelato is called Iced Rose. Uh, we'll see how this looks. But now, add a wee bit of water. This water actually has a wee bit of perfect pearls in it, but that's just because it, I've been using it for that. I'm not looking for um, incredible coverage here. I'm looking for a, a hint, a pink. Um, so this might actually be too pale but then again I could maybe give it a second coat and that might do the trick because I'm going for a kind of shabby chic look so there's going to be um, a lot of white in this as well Speaking of shabby chic, I was in TK Maxx this morning, or TJ Maxx as it is in America, and uh, they had a chest of drawers, and quite frankly, I would have thrown it out. Um, I mean, shabby chic's one thing, right? But this really was taking liberties with shabby chic. Uh, it was just, it, lo it honestly looked as if they'd dragged it out of somebody's house, and that, that person had probably had it for at least 50 years. Um, and not been very good with it, you know, I'd moved it from house to house about 800 times. So this particular die cut, it's actually, um, I die cut it three times from watercolour paper and just layered them up on top of one another to give me the finished look. Um, what I had wanted, I mean I've seen a lot of people when they're doing mixed media work use um, chipboard uh, die cuts, uh, you know laser cut chipboard. I've bought it in the past and I, I have to say I wasn't overly impressed with it. It's, it breaks very very easily. Um, so in terms of quality I don't think it's that great. I really don't. I wouldn't rush out to buy it that's for sure so uh, even if I had um, the additional problem is it doesn't appear to be very readily available um, you know it's a lot of it's coming from the likes of Poland uh, or Latvia and and you can't go onto websites for companies that are selling it because they're not in English. Uh, so you know you don't know how to look it up on the internet. Right, 
I think that will do this. It's very, very pale, but that's fine. Now, I wanted to add, I'm going to just see if I can add some pink to the tips of the petals on these little flowers. Let's add another wee bit of gelato here. Open that up a bit. And I'll go on the big petals. So these I distressed with a uh, I initially used a brush, a clarity brush, that's clarity brushes, made by the Clarity Stamp Company. Um, they're not the easiest thing in the world to work with when it comes to doing uh, this sort of blending. So I went over it with just a blending tool, just being very careful in terms of how I, uh, I did it, you know, to keep my a touch fairly light. Do you know it's funny? I was watching. I've been watching quite a lot of uh, videos recently on this kind of mixed media, which is why I got the hankering to do it. And uh, do you know the one thing that struck me? The videos that I preferred were the ones that had flowers that were that's not stuck in right, I don't think. That were uh, two tone as opposed to just, you know, one single colour. Um they were just so much nicer. Uh, I don't know why it is. Right, where's my I can wait that because I don't think I need that again. Maybe just clean the tip of this brush. Where did I put the lid of the gelato? Do you know it's funny, see when I've got my glasses on I can't find things like this. It must be on my table somewhere. That's, nope, that's the tip of my gelato. That's the tip of that. Right. Now, uh, the other thing is, I had die cut uh, some leaves that I'm going to use in this as well. I think they're okay. It's on the little tips of them. See, I've got more flowers over here, but I'm not going to use them all, and I'm not going to use all of the thingy that I've had. Try it. Uh, I'm not going to use all of the leaves or all of the flowers because I just don't think this is big enough for it. So, now I've got a tag here that uh, I bought it like this. I'm just going to go around it with the Distress Ink. some ribbon for it. Bear with me when I go into the drawer where I my ribbon's a little bit of a shambles. No, not to put too fine a point in it. Right. 
then I'll just pick up the ribbon I dropped. Now I also cut a piece of lace for fitting under it, so I'm going to put that there and then add the tag on top. Where am I? Wait a minute to have a wee look. You know, I think that needs elevated again. So, get my trusty carpet. Two thicknesses here. I'm just wanting this raised up a wee bit from uh, the flowers, although it will. I'm wondering actually, I'm thinking about this and I'm not sure this is the right move. If I should maybe just stick it up the top like that. Just In fact, I think that is what I'll do. I folded that over there to put it out and I'm going to set that on top of it just now so that it doesn't move and I'll add my glue to the corrugated card that I've put on the back of this wee tag. This wee tag is on the paper, it's not as if it's a card. Hold it down. I'll put the lid back on this. And I'll pause temporarily because the big wooden blender's going to go again. So I'll be back in a second. 
So we're back and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to uh, adhere the mask to the big roses. Um, I'm just going to use the Nouveau glue on this and try and go as easy as I can in terms of how much I'm using because I don't want it splurging all over the place. Although there is obviously, it's a dry clear glue so it's not going to be uh, terribly obvious to the grand scheme of things. Right, I think that's enough. I think. Right, we're not going to put in a little bit there. Right, let's we'll see how this goes. And about. We'll go a bit there and we'll put something heavy on top just now to weigh it down and hopefully ensure it has a degree of adhesion. Now it's it's stretching a bit beyond the actual uh, card but that, again that's okay because what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to a mat it onto a piece of black card. Not terribly big, still probably smaller than the mask, but uh, just giving it a wee bit extra um, support if you like. So we'll just give that a wee second to dry and we'll have a look at what else we've got. So I want to add two of these wee flowers. I've got three wee pink rosebuds. Uh, I have, in terms of leaves, I've got Ooh. some kind of champagne coloured glitter. I've got those big leaves that have got the embossed resist on them. And I've got an assortment of uh, green leaves that I uh, die cut and painted. Um, I've also gone round the edges with the, uh, what do you call it, Victorian velvet ink. Um, now I've got an assortment of the little white flowers should I feel I need them. I haven't quite made up my mind as to whether or not I would add any more of those. I mean originally I was going to have as many as four of the bigger flowers on it but it's, um, it was just it was going to be too much. I've also got a, a polymer clay butterfly that is probably going to be adhered to the tag somewhere. And I've got a couple of wee hearts, but I don't think I'll use them. I've also got a wee metal key that I quite like. I'd quite like to use that on this. So move these wee bits out of the way because we're not using them. Oh, and I've also got... I mean, I might not use all of this. I've also got a little strand of uh, bling diamantes, or diamantes, however you pronounce it, um, that can be draped across this as well. So... I think we're just about ready. Now I'm going to be using a uh, Fabri-Tac to stick these on but I think what I need to do before I go any further with the Fabri-Tac is I need to clear the nib of this. So I'm just going to take a baby wipe to it because it's, it's just horrible. 
I really don't understand how they can make a glue that, that doesn't end up quite so gloopy as that does. Right, let's go for it and we'll add the flowers. Now, I'm not sure whether to do one either side like that and then actually I would maybe need to move that to there uh, because if we're going to add in the likes of these this is just trial at the moment remember we need it to I don't think I can use that there. I think that might be too big. Might be a bit much. In fact, these might be a bit much. I might take them out and just use these gold ones and the leaves because I think that will be enough. I think that's enough height there. Right, we'll go with this. Kinda. Obviously it changes as you add things to it. Right, I think maybe first things first. It might be a good idea to uh, stick the butterfly into place. Start with the flowers. Sorry for the silence, it's just it's really difficult to uh, concentrate on that glue and uh, talk. Right, now um, I'm going to shut this up just now so we'll clean that wee top because I think I think I'll use the Nouveau glue um, for the paper elements, I think they're just as, uh, the Nouveau glue is just as effective when it comes to the paper elements as Fabri-Tac would be. It's all very well to argue that it, it sticks it down quite quick. It does, but it's such a blooming mess. So, you know, there's, there's limits to what I can cope with. I want to put this under that flower and the other one will be overlapping it somewhat.
create a new. We'll add some leaves. I was um, choosing the leaves to do. I initially, you know, was trying to get them all the same uh, so that it did look like, you know, a coherent bush, if you like. But then I thought, do you know, that half of the attraction is just, you know, the difference in shapes and sizes. Um, that adds interest and that at that point I thought well you know I'll just I'll add whatever I feel I've got that that fits in with the the picture of things. Right now I'm wanting to add in these rosebuds. I think I will add some of these wee white flowers by the way. But I'm not I'll need to use Fabri-Tac to do these. Uh, did I stick that down? No, I did. Um, wait a minute, hold on, I'll do this one more leaf down the bottom. So I want to stick this wee tiny leaf. This was actually, it's like a, a, a whole branch, if you like, and uh, all I did was I cut it, and then, oops, and then I snipped it into little segments to go with what I was doing because I thought that it was too, the whole, the whole breathe thing was too big to fit in with everything. So, right, so we'll go back to using these rosebuds first of all. And I need to try and get Fabri-Tac on the end and a bit on the actual flower itself. And I'm just going to stick it in here behind that. And another one. There. Now I'm going to add, I think, at least one of these, if not more. One more wee rosebud that I'm thinking I'll add down here. Try and get that wee thing mail there. That wee leaf. Uh, wait a minute, I'm going to add another flower there. Mm. 
Right, uh, shut up the fabric tank for the time being because I think that could be. Well, I've still to add that little key. I really want to add that key, but I want to add this as well. Um, now this is going to be quite awkward. What we need to do is concentrate on one side to glue it down because the other side is going to be elevated. So that will go in there and stick, hopefully. And oh, we're almost done. Right, now what I want to do is I want to add this bling which I'll probably add up here and the awkward thing about the wing is in an ideal world what you want to do is you want to get glue on each strand Oh, I did at one point have a specific glue for this believe it or not but uh, it was one of these things that I didn't use it often enough so it's probably solid as a rock in which case ain't going to be using it Precision's the name of the game, eh? Right, now bear in mind this is dry clear glue, so we will be, um, we don't need to overly worry. Final thing to go on is this key. And I think what we'll do is try to very carefully add fabric tag to it. concerned it might be visible. No, I think we're okay. Right. That's it. I can take no more of the tension. Although I do have one wee flower left. And I could stick that down there. I could but I'm not going to. Sometimes you stop. Right, that's it. Game's a bogey. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer it up on a piece of black card. So if you can bear with me, I'll stop just now while I find the black card and then we'll do that. Right, so almost done. Um, I've cut the black card and I've cut it... Um, a sixteenth, uh, sorry, an eighteenth, an eighth, an eighth, get it right Moira, an eighth of an inch bigger than the actual size of the tag. So the tag itself is four by seven, uh, so the black paper is um, four and a quarter by eight and a quarter, yeah, sorry, seven and a quarter. Oh. Right, uh, glue. I'm going round the edge. It is a very, very narrow border. But it just adds a wee something, if you know what I mean. 
Okay, this is going to be quite difficult because I'm doing it on a black surface. Plus I've got a ton of hair in my eyes. So, let's see if we can get it. out there but it dries clear so I'm not going to worry myself about that. Out there as well. Right put that to the side to dry and we'll do the pink one. Now this has actually also got a piece of car uh, corrugated card on it and I'm thinking it might be a logical move to add corrugated card to the pink one as well. So Put the lid on the glue and we'll cut this exactly, in fact we'll put it just a wee bit smaller than the tag and then it should fit in okay. Uh, right so I want this just a wee bit under four, I'm going to make it three and seven eighths. This will be six and seven eighths. And that should be fine. This really is pretty big, this. Tony. Uh, but it was what I wanted, so. Right, let me just check that I didn't damage that when I moved it. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Right, uh, so we've got to get this onto that. Like so. And I think we'll use a fabric attack on this just to get this on the card. So small. I really don't have the patience for things that are slow. Um, I don't know, can you develop attention deficit disorder as you get older? But I mean, I, s I swear, I just, I, I get bored so easily. Um, Maybe there's just not enough mental stimulation in my life. There's certainly enough physical stimulation because I swear to goodness I never get a minute running about after everybody but um, the actual mental stimulation clearly not as much as I need. Right, this is a wee bit warped because of the what do you call it? When we did the embossing but it's okay it was stick enough right now just hold it down till it's in situ and then we can add the normal oh, put the lid on the fabric the tackle of fabs this is very attractive I like this I suppose I would really because I made it Right. Now, what we want to do is we want to use the Nouveau Dries Clear Glue on the cardboard. Now I've got to try and get it on the black, leaving a wee tiny border. 
and you can barely see it because it's black on black here. So let's move that. I've got a ton of wiggle room because of the wet glue. I think that's us. Lid on the glue. Moira Stan. Um, right, let's have a look at what we've got. Or, sorry, this is a wee bit of MS still, so it needs wiped. I don't take any pictures. Um, I've got a wee, a wee easel. Uh, I'll do some close-up photographs, but that's about it. Uh, can I just see if these are actually in frame? I think they are. Oh, they are. Um, so you'll see them closer up and you can judge what you think. But these are a giveaway. Um, so all you've got to do is like, subscribe and comment. Be over 18 years of age. I think that's significant because some folks seem to say it when they're doing giveaways. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a legal requirement. It probably is. Um, like and subscribe and comment on this video um, to be anywhere a chance of getting it. Uh, they're going to be a devil to wrap up, but I'll wrap them up as best I can in uh, bubble wrap and get them posted to the winner. Um, today's date is, in fact, this is Valentine's Day, so I suppose happy Valentine's Day. Um, a nice romantic. Uh, prize. So this is 14th, so we'll give you till um, a week today, which would make it the 21st, and uh, I'll just try to pick a winner at random with the random generator thing if it's working. If not, I'll be sitting uh, writing out everybody's name. And, um, well, that'll be it. So thanks very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this and it wasn't too tedious. Um, if, I mean, I'm, I'm planning on making some more. I've actually ordered some proper canvases to, to make the real ones. We have you to... That's Timmy barking, by the way. Um, we have you to selling them in my Etsy shop uh, by Gonzera, if you're interested. Um, so if you're not the lucky one and you, you like them uh, sufficiently, then, you know, hopefully I'll be selling something similar. Because uh, obviously they're not going to be the same old... Uh, always like to shake things up a bit. So thanks for your time anyway and um, I'll speak to you all soon. So remember like, subscribe and comment to be anywhere a chance of winning these two. Okay and I'll see you all again soon. Bye! Bye says Mira. Bye bye! Bye says Timmy. Bye says Daisy. Bye says Chip. Although I think Chip's sleeping and so is Daisy. Bye!